This podcast is brought to you by The Healthy Hub. Hello guys and welcome to another episode of the Just a Kick It is a Blessing podcast uh, with your host Keith Tupagatiramu. Today is a very special episode. I have not only one but two guests in studio with me. So without further ado, I will let my guest to my left introduce herself. Hi everybody. My name is Lena. Um, I am originally Sudanese but I was born here uh grew up here in Kenya so Kenya is pretty much home to me as well um i am currently wrapping up with my masters which i did in supply chain logistics management did my undergrad in london in biomedical engineering um and yeah i also run a side business which sells organic hair and skin products called Vinta Beauty Organics so you should definitely give that a follow um and yeah apart from that i'm very enthusiastic about uh sport fitness just staying active and i guess that's what we're here to talk about so thank you for having me first of all even before i get to my guest on my right i'm charging you for all those advertising <laughs> that you've done illegally you know but i'm just joking i'm just joking <laughs> yeah to the guest on the right hi everyone i'm daudi kagwa i am a artist that's what i do for a living um i studied in south africa uct at the michaela school of fine art um i'm generally a very fitness oriented person very focused very driven um i think to be honest with you all it's very clear why i think we've been chosen for this podcast so it'll be interesting to see how this goes yeah uh before we even get into why we're here today um you said you're an artist so it must be Last time I had Shema who was here tell me how it's very hard to be an artist in a country like ours. So what's what's your take on that? Yeah, it is quite hard. So one of the things is you have to be very focused, very intentional with everything that you're doing. So um one thing that I know is that every step of the way it's yeah. have a plan, right? Because if you don't have a plan, you because I've seen there's artists who sell on the side of the road then there's DJs who never make it up there's artists who are selling CDs or trying to sell flash discs but then it's like okay cool if i can find the right networks and find the right people to talk to maybe this will give me my in to another sphere or you know another ne- the next level of my career yeah so it's just one of those things for you just have to be very intentional yeah. with every step that you take yeah i had you had a whatever um you had something uh last mm. saturday yeah i had an art exhibition yeah how was that It was actually I was I'm not going to lie I was very I was surprised at the turnout. Um yeah. I didn't know that many people were into art like yeah. that. So it was one of the things for like I'm trying to do is expose I guess our sphere to to art and see how we can, you know, progress it to a level. Yo, no cap first of all. <clears throat> I'm just going to expose myself here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never understood art because <laughs> even in school like <laughs> I'm telling you, my mom used to ask me, what on this report card is looking like this, but art, I don't know. The guy, I've told the teacher, you know, the 20 bob. Yeah. <laughs> all my art exams, the 20 bob, I'd put it here, the 20, 10, and 5. Then I just shade like this. <laughs> and I tell him, this is contemporary art. <laughs> That time I don't even know what that means, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, art is an expression of self, yeah. right? So... With everything that you're doing, even that, that's art, yeah. yes. But it's like, <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, you can take it further, but, you know, yeah. it's 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 one of those things where it's like, okay, cool. Um, How can I get people to understand what I'm doing? How can I show people what's in my mind, right? So with my exhibition, what I'm trying to do is create, um, what I did basically was create an environment mm-hmm. that um, speaks to that. Well, so for me, it was about the entire experience. So it was about the decor, the lighting, the you know the ambience of the entire event because i wanted it to be an event because i realized in kenya um traditional art exhibitions don't necessarily have the pull that i would necessarily want for myself so i was like how can i set myself apart in an industry that is very um so in the art world it's called very white cube yeah right? so it's everything is very pristine and very <laughs> you know and i was just like okay cool like how do i make how do i shake yeah. the how do i shake that cube a bit well bro Congratulations and all the best with that yeah, you know. Thank you. But now to why we're here today um and that's basically 
fitness. So Are you charging uh, Dowdy? Ah, yeah, yeah, for, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> nah, I get the, the discounts, the, man. What you talking about? <laughs> the, 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 the team has taken notes. So when I'm buying my next artwork, <laughs> we'll, we'll just deduct <laughs> it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, why we're here today is uh, basically talk about fitness. And I'll start with you. What got you into fitness? Well, well, to be honest, my journey started in 2017. Yeah. So, you know, growing up, I was always quite active. I was like in a lot of sport teams. I was always in like the rounders team, the football team in school. And I was quite, quite a sporty child. Um, and then I went, so I was, I was there, I was in Brabant for that. Yeah. And then I went to uh, Brooke House. And I think Brooke House was like, Dowdy, I, I met Dowdy in Brooke House. And Brooke House is a little bit more laid back in terms of sport. But it was like super disciplined when it came to like, academics and i wasn't that i wasn't at that academic level yet because i came from like braven that was just so like Sporting. you know laid back like not academic at all and so i kind of was just like okay you know what i'm gonna start going to the gym and i would wake up every single day at five and i lived wow. really far away from school like i lived an hour away so i'd wake up at five get to the gym at six i would train for like an hour Bearing in mind at that time, when I say train, I was just running on the treadmill. Like, <laughs> I was just running. Like, I had absolutely no idea what? about what I was doing in the gym. I had, like, no idea at all. I, I, I was just focused on, you know what, I'm not happy with, like, how I feel right now. Yeah. And I want to do something about it. So I'm just going to go to the gym. And I was just so obsessed with this idea of going to the gym. But I had no idea what I was doing. So I was just spending hours and hours and hours running. And I did lose weight. But I was just, like, like out of like shape you know yeah. um and then i went to uni in the uk and you know what your first year of uni is like i put on 15 kilos and of course because wow. i was i was like restricting myself in high school so much with what i ate so i would like cut out carbs and it was just so unhealthy like that's just not the way to live life i'm such a foodie i love food i love chocolate i love crisps i love all that and i was like i don't want to be depriving myself all the time and so like uni was a clear experience i think on in my first year of how i just put on 15 kilos because i had cut out everything and you just gain it back if it's not a sustainable way of doing things um so yeah that happened in uni and then i was i got to a point where i was like oh my God, I've put on all this weight. I don't even want to come back to Kenya because people are going to be like, oh my God, look at you and how do you look and all this. And I was yeah. like, when I think about it now, I'm just like, you know, I was in such a bad place. Um, and so when I came back in 2017 and I graduated, I was like, okay, I feel more stable. I'm in Kenya now. And the crazy thing is, it's like, Food here is so much more fresher, so much more organic. So like even in the UK, you could feel like you're eating healthy, but there's like so much additives and preservatives in like food that you think you're eating healthy, but you're actually not. So it was just easier for me to be here and like to actually be like stabilize my fitness journey here. And I started in 2017 and I've just been really consistent since. And I feel oh. great. <laughs> I do not have done since 2017. But <clears throat> anyways, yo, Dowdy, what about you? Um, so I guess for me, look how it started. I'll start from the very beginning, actually. Yeah. So I think when I was the very first time when I first moved to Kenya. Yeah. Um, I got robbed, right? Oh my. Wow. So, <laughs> so for me, it was this more of like, interesting. <laughs> okay, cool. And the thing is, it was robbed by some other school kids, right? From a different school. Or something. Yeah. You know, I was walking home. So for me, I think from that time, it kind of like made a flip in my mind. It was like, okay, cool. I'm never going to be vulnerable like that again. So it started like that. It was like, okay, cool. I need to do this for me. Wow. You know? So you're here yeah, I'm 14 years old trying to go to the gym telling you no you can't you know because you're not old enough to take you know because the, there's a thing of like six you're only 16 and above to you know yeah. gyms have rules so I was like okay fine we're in school it's broke house I'm like all right fine we're gonna do we're gonna play sports I played every sport you could think of I was in swimming I, I played cricket I played hockey you know I've just anything yeah. to I could be let's be active so I can be able to run you know <laughs> <laughs> just in case you know so um, but then that actually just started like, okay, cool. How do I, then when I started gymming, it was like, okay, how do I then build on this? So I was like, okay, let me learn from whoever instructor we had in the gym. So let's go. And to the point, I think I even start going, I used to go at lunch times. I used oh. to go in the morning. I used to go after school. I would see you in the morning sometimes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Literally yeah. it was one of those things for us. Like, okay, I'm always, guys used to be like, oh, where do you find me? There's only three places. You have the art room, the music room or the gym. That's where you knew I was or on the field. Yeah. You know, if you want to hang out find me there um and then when we got to uni um i was like okay i started doing athletics right so i did um so I, i'm a sprinter so i was like okay cool how am i gonna be able to do this and also gym at the same time because it really cardio stuff kind of shreds you very quickly 
and you're still trying to gain muscle. So, and the thing is, when you get to uni, you meet big guys, you know, get the, these, you know, I went to South Africa, right? Yeah. So these guys who play rugby and everyone has been huge since high school. And, you know, here you are, you think, I thought I was big. No, <laughs> no, I was still skinny. You know, you still have that, like, yeah. yeah, you've just, like, you've just finished your growth spurt, the first level of your growth spurt. So yeah. you're like, okay, cool. So everything that you had is kind of stretched out a bit. So it was like, okay, fine. Let's see how best we can do this. So I got the big guys to start training me and we started moving like that. All right, cool. So you see how they eat, how they, what's their diet like, mm-hmm. you know, and the thing is because we're all in the same residence and everything. So yeah. they're like, yo, don't eat whatever they're giving us today. Like, let's go here and get something. Let's, you know, so they would kind of like put you on the same yeah. wavelength that they're on. Mm-hmm. And I think I never used to take protein. I never used to do anything because I was like, let's just start. If I'm going to start, let me start just natural. Gosh, like, yeah. let me let my body build it for itself wow. and then we can you know, slowly when we get to a level where like, we're comfortable with it, boom. Then I lost all the weight at some point because I had a surgery um, on my shoulder. And then it was also like, okay, cool. Now I know that this is a lifestyle that I want. I need to be able to build this all back up. Yeah. So at that point after my surgery, when I was really, really working on building my, I think I was going about seven, yeah, literally seven days out of seven a week. Just to be like, all right, cool. It's an hour a day. That's all you need. You know, just like consistency. Just like yeah. be there. Even mm-hmm. if I'm not doing a lot, just be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you actually really see the difference. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> okay. First, I'll come to you. Um, from Okay. From his journey, I've gotten a lot that he had, he was doing it with a team. Yeah. What about yours? Is it something you've done alone or is it something you do with other people? Well, I think like throughout, I think especially like, in Kenya, yeah. it was hard. I, I did have a lot of like active friends, like in school, we were all in sports teams and stuff together. But I think as like you grow up and life gets in the way and it gets busy and things like that, people, you know, it's it's hard to prioritize the gym. Um, and so for majority of the time, I think I was doing it by myself. But when I do get demotivated, I try to reach out to like people who I know. Like I hit up Dowdy actually recently and I was like, listen, I'm feeling demotivated. Come to my house. Let's have a session. Yeah. And I think that's what gives you what that's what gives gives me at least the motivation when I'm surrounded around people who are like minded in that sense where we share the same goals and the same vision and the same mission. And we're able to kind of like execute together and it gives you that drive, you know. Um, but obviously, like motivation is something that only gets you going that's what i believe i think discipline is what keeps you going going. and like that that's what gives you the consistency um and i think you have to find motivation in something that's sustainable like you it's not enough to just be like i want to look good because for me what triggered it was my mental health like i suffered from anxiety and i think that was what my coping coping mechanism like going to the gym i just feel so good throughout the day so yeah, I think surrounding yourself with like like-minded people is definitely to answer your question, like something that helps me when I need when I feel demotivated. No, I like <clears throat> the thing for yeah, cuz for me that's one thing I struggle with, man. I'll go like <laughs> I'll go for like a month of like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. After the month, yo, man, I all all those gym plans canceled. <laughs> I'm about to do the same things that I think, you know. Honestly, I think I, it's I hard. It is hard. And I think you just have to honestly, like Dowdy said, have something like even just one percent is like better than nothing. You know, like even yeah. if you tell yourself, I'm just gonna go for a walk today and you start off baby steps, I think by the end of the week, you're like, Oh my god, I've been able to go like five or six days a week and like that's better than me not, like you know not going going even one day because back in the day I remember I used to be like oh my god I haven't gone to the gym today oh my god like that's it like my whole week is cancelled you know whereas that's what sets you apart from everybody else I think like when you're able to be like no I just had a bad day it was a bump in the road and tomorrow I'm gonna get back on it and do better do you think you like the gym I absolutely love it wow. <laughs> I mean I have days I have days where I don't want to go 100% yeah. I'm yeah. human like everybody else True. but like it's just like I said my coping mechanism like it's just what makes me feel good because I think it's tough though you see for me it's very easy to do something I like you get yeah like bad good whatever day it is I'll always I'm always down to play football yeah yeah but like but you see Tupac I think that's very important because I think like 
you finding other ways to stay active because let's be honest not everybody likes the gym but it's like even with me some days you (laughs) (laughs) but even with me some days like i just don't want to go and so i've even like started a friend and i organized a girls football team which we do on wednesdays tuesdays man yo push it to wednesdays let me come i change you guys (laughs) we have boys too yes yes so i saw it snaps yeah um and yeah that's a different way to like stay active but wednesdays yeah I'm a Wednesday this for bar next door. <laughs> bar next door is cancelled. Yeah, but yo, please, Wednesdays, yeah. But then it's now to you, Daudi. I like, do you actually like the gym to start with? <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's actually, it's one of those things that's actually just good. I realize it's good for my mental health. Like, it's just one of the places where, like, I cool, I'm coming here for Kazi. We're going to go, we're going to do this thing, and then you leave. Yeah. Like, there's, because even with my gym partner, there was a point where we see each other every day, and then you realize, man, we haven't spoken. And the thing is, because we know when we're going to the gym, it's okay yeah we're doing sets we're doing things but you haven't actually talked to your friend yet mm-hmm. you know and i see you every day and you're like okay man actually we haven't sp- okay yeah let's meet let's meet <laughs> on the week let's let's go out or something yeah. you know but it's it's one of the things for like okay because we know that in this space it's just okay we're here let's do what we need to do leave it's a place of like we're just here to let's let's work it's yeah. a place of work you know and it feels good to just release that stress but also one thing i noticed is people don't know when to take breaks mm-hmm. yeah see so even yeah someone can go like you don't have to start on monday you know you can start wednesday thursday i go friday maybe i do something on sunday afternoon you know yeah. if you're doing four times a week oh. but sometimes they're like okay cool as long as you've got them as long as you've got your days for the week yeah. you say i want to do minimum five days figure it out do five days a week yeah. and what motivates you to go to the gym the healthy lifestyle yeah so, yeah like i feel good when i go to the gym it's one of those places where you're just like okay like i can I feel, i'm not i feel more like myself you know yeah. where you're just like okay like, but it's also building like, like you know when you're building different parts of your body yeah. like okay cool I, mean, I can see this part progressing to a certain level I'm like okay cool like like recently i know for i was like okay i'm going to work on my back cuz um after that point when i'd lost weight it was the part that actually had diminished a lot cuz i was on my back a lot yeah so it became quite flat and i was like nah let's 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 build this back up and you're yeah. like you know we can see the progress and you're like mm-hmm. damn okay one month in you know okay cool the traps are growing you know <laughs> and you, you check yourself out in the mirror you're like okay cool like language i don't even understand okay. but, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah so it's just one of those things like you just see the cuz like a lot of the time is yeah. people think progress is going to come very quickly that's yeah. patience true. and that's, it's just like nah take your time with it like you know it's like yo it's what it, six weeks from now you're going to be looking different yeah. eight weeks wow You know if I yeah. stay here 2 months boom 3 months you're like okay now this looks completely different from where I was because you stayed consistent. You know like listening to both your stories there's one thing I've picked is you guys have not just like you guys have intrinsic motivation like your motivation is from within you. You get mm. like for me no cup when I went to the gym <laughs> it was all extrinsic motivation like I was doing it for all the wrong reasons you get yeah. but you see like for you said you're not happy for you said you know you wanted and like i don't know how you find that balance you know to find that intrinsic uh whatever especially for something that comes after so long it's cuz it's not about the initial gratification yeah that's the thing it's like okay cuz i know it's a problem with yeah our generation yeah, yeah. instant gratification yeah. i want abs today i'm gonna you know go to the gym and bash out. you know those guys who wake up at 3 a.m like because you've been you know when guys overthink or something yeah. you wake up at 3 a.m start doing <laughs> sit-ups and you're like okay, man like what no are <laughs> what are you doing just take it easy things will come just me and those guys for instant gratification bro i can yeah. go like this gym one day i felt like like guys now we're feeling like the hulk <laughs> i felt a bit like the shoulders are added or what you know but yeah bro that's actually that's very interesting to hear you know like to find something that actually cuz i'm also not a patient person so mm. how to find that patience like you know how do you guys work i think that? i think honestly the patience aspect of it is that when your goals are more driven when they're more when they're more um centered around kind of you how you feel yeah. rather than how you look or how you per- like others oh. perceive you is how you're able to kind of stay consistent because like i think even even like you said you were going to the gym for all the wrong reasons right i think even me in the because beginning I'm even starting because december is coming <laughs> 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 
I mean, yeah, I think that's another reason though, right? Yeah. Wrong but, reasons though. I mean, yeah, but I think everybody wants to look good at the end of the day as well. True. It's just you have to also like it has to be also something that's like about how you feel because how you feel is just like the most important thing i think even with me in the beginning like i didn't want to like be in the gym because i was like i don't know how to use these machines and i don't know how like people are going to look at me and like i don't know i'm not supposed to be here and it's like when you actually are like i'm doing this for me yeah. you know not for anybody else then i think you're able to really like thrive First of all, you've even brought a very important part. Huh? First of all, you know me. Naturally, I'm a small guy. You know, mm. when I go to the gym, I see some weird guys. I'm like, hey, <laughs> demotivation, a hundred. They so should you, be motivated. How did you even walk through that, actually, that you saw, like, these guys that were actually way bigger than you? And, you know. Because for me, it was like, okay, I want to be like that. Yeah. It was just, it's a simple, it was just a simple, like, okay, look, I see what these guys have. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Because some of them are too big. Let me know. Like, these guys were like, yo, we can't. But everybody's goals are also different, Exactly. Right? Yeah. But you see, I'm just like, okay, what's going to be comfortable for me? When I'm like, all right, cool. When yeah. I look in the mirror, I'm going to be yeah. satisfied at the end of the day. You know? Where it's just like, all right, cool. This is, I can look at myself and be like, nah, you've, you're out of shape. And I'll just be like, okay, at some point, it's going to start bothering you. We'll wait till that point happens. You know, because sometimes you haven't been to the gym, let's say, in a month. You've been working. But, you've been doing what, But you what? know, like, it's interesting to hear that because for guys... Yeah. Like like you said, you know, you go to the gym and you see all these guys and they're like really big and stuff. And with girls, it's like, I feel like it's even more toxic in the sense that like we spend a lot of our time on Instagram, right? And mm. I feel 100%. like with women, like I am not against surgery at all. Like, you know, you do what makes you happy. Yeah. But at the same time, it also like makes young girls look at all these Instagram models and things like that. And they're like, oh my yeah. God, I want to look like that. And it's like a lot of them also just went to a doctor overnight and got those bodies. Not that yeah. it's not that it, you know, every yeah. to each his own, but it's like you're kind of running after something that, you know, you'll never be able to achieve because also everybody's bodies are different. I'm yeah. not going to be able to look exactly like that. I'm built different. My frame is different. And well, it's also, important. It's because we're in our 20s. Let's put it that way. Because this is not going to stay like this forever. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, while I have. The opportunity yeah. to look like this, I'm going to make sure that I can get it to the best, of, you know, yeah. shape, shape, yeah. best shape ever. So I'm just like, because I know what 20, 30 years from now, yeah, yeah. it might yeah. change. It might change. Hopefully, not. hopefully not. <laughs> but so yeah. but anyways, um, there's something that the two of you have really brought out a lot in this conversation, is the aspect of fitness and mental health. Mm -hmm. So, what relationship do you think exists between the two? Um, I think it's actually, I think I remember one of my PE teachers telling me, but this was actually still in book. I was just saying that there's actually a correlation to the people who go to gym. Yeah. Who have actually, you have more consistent grades like, and you consistently get better because yeah. your mind is at ease somewhere else. You've been, the mind has been able to do something else and work on focus on something else like intrinsically. Right. Yeah. So it gives you that space for your mind to relax. Right, because you know the thing is doing because the gym is a lot of repetitive motion. Yeah. Right, and then now let's say now in exams, it's like you have to recall information, so it will be like okay, cool. Like the same way, it becomes like muscle memory, so it also helps you really be in a space where you can okay, cool. How can I get to a part of my mind where I'm just like okay, this is like a natural thing, because I don't know, like exams used to be so much pressure. Yeah. Right, but then you see like okay, cool. If I can do it like anything else, like I'm just at home doing a practice paper. Like back in those days, you'd be like, all right, cool. And it just felt like very natural. I've never looked at it like that though. But what about you? I think Dali's covered most of it, but also I think like scientifically, right? Yeah. You release endorphins, I think, when yeah, you, you do. work out. So that's already something that's that's making you feel better automatically. Um and I think also like nutrition has a big role to play in it as well. Like you need to even what you eat has an effect on your mental um because I remember in Brayburn, like before I came to Brookhouse, we were at the tuck shop. I was the first one at the tuck shop all the time. Break time and lunchtime, number one. I had those little super rings. I used to carry, like I used to buy like five of them. And I would just like <laughs> snack on them the whole day after school. Like, you know, and then they had the demas, the little sweets mm. and like the pin pops. And that was just literally my, and now when I think about it, I'm like, how did I, how was I living like that? That's probably why I was caught up in drama all the time. Because I was just, my mind was not it was clear, you know. Yeah. No, but it's actually true. Um, when you whatever, when you exercise, you know the endorphins, yeah. and then there's dopamine, serotonin, exactly, and then it also reduces cortisol, which gives you stress. You get exactly. Um, so yeah, like today before I left, my dad asked me, "So what are you presenting?" And basically, 
I let him know that I was doing this and he actually told me the craziest thing ever. He was like you know like why I feel like a lot of our generation is struggling a lot with mental health is because for them exercise came naturally. Mm-hmm. You see your parent tells you they walked to school. Exactly. Yeah. They did chores. Exactly. They walked back home. They had to fetch water. They did fishing, That's cooking, yeah. hunting. Yeah. So you see, all that was some sort of exercise yeah. in a weird way. But mm. in our generation, the only exercise you probably do is from your bed to the shower. Or to the to club. Downstairs, you know. <laughs> to the yeah, club. or maybe the many steps you do in the club. But other than that, you know, you're, there's nothing you're doing. Yeah. But if you look at those guys, like it's all, it all comes naturally. Yeah. And it was actually whatever... Um, so yeah, and that brings me now to my next question. Do you think that going to the gym has made you feel better about yourself? But that's quite broad. I mean, my, about myself in what sense? Because I feel like there's a lot of aspects to it. Going yeah. to the gym, I mean, going to the gym makes me feel better. Yes, physically. Has it right? increased like your self confidence? A hundred and ten percent. Like I feel like me just knowing that I'm able to be more disciplined, me knowing that I'm able to take accountability, me being able to know that I can like wake up in the morning and I'm not feeling like I need to go, but I go anyways. That just, all of all of those aspects together has me, has increased my self-esteem, my self-confidence. And just like, you know, that saying, when you look good, you feel, feel good. good. I think it's, a, it's super true. What about you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the question was, um, do you feel like going to the gym has helped your self-confidence? How you yeah. feel about yourself? Definitely. Um, in terms of self-confidence, yeah. Because um, I think even when I was in, in uni, you could see the steps. Yeah. You know, slowly, slowly, slowly. Because even then when I started doing athletics, you can see, okay, cool, I'm getting faster. Yeah. Because, you know, the, of just being consistent. Just consistency. Yeah. And it helps you. Even like, I guess with friendships, it's just weird, you know, cause I'm like, okay, cool. I know that here I can be consistent with these people yeah. here. Yeah. I can do, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just like how, even how people start to interact with you, yeah. you can see that okay, the, the way they interact with you because of how you've presented yourself because of like, it just because of how you mentally feel. And also I think like yeah. just spending that time, if you go to the gym by yourself, which I do most of the time, yeah. mm-hmm. I think like the fact that you spend so much time with yourself, like yeah. on a daily basis, you have, let's say that one hour to yourself. You learn a lot about yourself in that one hour, even though you're locked in and you're, you're doing whatever you're doing in the gym, like you're spending a good one hour dedicated to yourself for the day. And that already like gives you more self-awareness. Yeah. You really push yourself. Sometimes when I'm like, I realize when I gym by myself, because when I'm with friends, yeah, we're kind of pushing each other. Yeah. But then, like sometimes when I'm on my own and I haven't had a partner in let's say a while, you really, you find you really know how to push this because it's like things I could I could stop halfway. I could yeah. do the routine, do the the major stuff, major major muscle groups or whatever, and be like, okay, I'm done for the day. I'm tired. I'm out. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, cool. Today, nah, it's for pushing. Let's go. You know. Yeah. But sorry. Yeah. No go problem. <laughs> go, man. No, I was just gonna say that like I think also a lot of people get scared about going to the gym because they think that it's this place that's like where everybody is going ham and everyone's going hot and i think like as much as that's great everybody's at different levels right yeah. but i think it's also a place where like you you know in the gym that i work out in i have every day well not every day the four times a week i go yeah i always see this um lady who's like a little bit older she's like maybe in her 60s or something and i see her there every single time i go and i'm like wow like i want to be like this when i'm 60 like she's so dedicated and she doesn't do anything crazy like she's not there lifting the heaviest of weights she's just there and like that's enough you know and i feel like that's why a lot of people are just scared because they think that like you have to be this like really hench person or like even with girls like i have to have to have been working out for a really long time to be at the gym but i think it's just you have to be in your own lane and like your own Mm -hmm. path and just trust it i think yeah like no i i think that's that's actually um an important point and I think, like, you know, I was telling you before the podcast started out, um, first of all, I'm very shy. Second of all, low self-esteem. But, like, the Not fact that all. you guys have talked about it so well, I think it's it's something I'll actually, um, you know, put um, put on the table, you know. And, um, in fact, actually, I've also remembered something I wanted to share with you guys was, today I saw there was a study, um, I think it was done, Is basically it's a TED, um, TED Talks, it says, change your life, something. Um, and... It just showed this. So they took 20 
um hotel like those ladies that work in hotels the ones that clean and make beds and what what mm-hmm. and they told 10 of them nothing mm-hmm. and then 10 of them were told by the way you know when you make a bed this is how many calories you tend to lose when you clean this is this this and surprisingly the 10 that were told um were happy at the end of the test mm-hmm. they lost more weight and like you know their self esteem yeah. when you when know I, it yeah. rose so wait when this is the group that which group the group that was told oh okay yeah. so the other group for them it was just work but okay. now this other group that was told like it was exercise mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like everything seemed mm-hmm. to improve, improve and yeah. they lost weight as mm-hmm. well you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and that's you see the everyday exercise thing so that's also i think one of the things that i'm also like trying to also push because yeah. I believe in the importance of fitness and mental health. Yeah. But how can we also make everyday exercise enjoyable? Mm. I get. think. And I think also it's just like a lot of people are very like if I don't go every day then I'm not doing anything, but it's like I like this rule of the 80 to 20% rule where like yeah. 80% of the time you're on your healthy shit and you have your your stuff together, right? But 20% of your life I have fun like life is also about enjoying isn't like this whole stuff of like restricting yourself and like oh my god i'm counting each and every single calorie like it's just not sustainable you really need to like live a little like yeah, you know i'm going to go out and i'm going to have a good time i'm going to have my chocolate fudge cake but the next day in the morning i'm waking up and i'm having my protein out, yeah. and i'm having my salads and i'm having my greens you know so mm. it's just about balance even though it's right. hard I could see the thing what you were saying it's it's um it's a perspective yeah you see mm-hmm. so the group that wasn't told yeah. like they were going about their normal lives like this is something i have to do let's move on right yeah. and then you see now because these people were given perspective right yeah. they're able to see the difference of how it was able to change their change like change their lives even just for a little yeah. right so the thing is like yes now with gym it would be like okay cool because i know i know what the benefits are right so cuz i'm like okay, i guess i have that that perspective where it's like a okay, cool i know the hard work pays off eventually yeah. like i'm not the i know i'm not a patient person per se mm-hmm. but i mean like yeah i'm an artist like i have to uh, watch paint dry you know <laughs> yeah, this okay, kind of thing i was about to ask how you <laughs> yeah, but, like <laughs> but you see it's like then you find patience in other things you uh-huh. see it's just like okay cool like, cuz even in the gym you're like all right cool i know this is six weeks from now this is going to be nice but right now cuz obviously week one is always like the worst You know? Honestly, Daddy, I think you're a really patient guy. You think so? You mm, are. I, maybe I don't know, but <laughs> that's a good thing, bro. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just like, okay, I know that the first week, the second week are going to be so hard. And people yeah. always just like, okay, we've done a week, I'm tired. Yeah. Oh, two weeks and then, you know, you've traveled, you had a weekend in Naivasha or something, you come back, ah, Monday, now nah, I'm tired, you know? Yeah. It's just like just 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 stick with it just stick with it just for a little bit and yeah. you see like okay that's why i tell people it's like oh, cool if you can do a week you can do two weeks if you've done two weeks you can do a mm-hmm. month then that month becomes six six weeks you know then you're like okay this this have little increments that you're telling yourself okay cool if i make it there then so that one step yeah thing. and i swear at some at point like you get so into it that like you're even like oh my god i have to you'll be on holiday and you'll want to be at the, at gym, the gym i promise for real yeah Yeah, okay. like hotels that that's have yeah that's going to be you yeah. to have like one i wake up like <laughs> one yeah. literally um actually the only actually thing that i did actually on holiday for like fitness was i was reading this book i can't even remember the name that my dad gave me yeah? and it says learn to pick up the small habits to change your life you know yeah mm-hmm. so i kind of feel okay i still do God, but i kind of feel like i was hitting the ball short in golf yeah <laughs> so like if i increased a bit of power in my arms i might hit the bill, the ball a bit longer in golf you know mm-hmm. and as long as i add like the distance in golf my game might be a bit better so then every every time i'd piss i'd do push ups <laughs> cuz i read like do something you do every day that stops you yeah so you actually end up doing like 80 push ups mm-hmm. a day but if you ask me right now to do 80 push ups hey i'm struggling yet <laughs> but you see like that's like like even my dad when i came here I was like try to find ways to show people that um exercise is actually crucial for your mental health yeah. and find little ways to add exercise exactly. into your life yeah. like it doesn't necessarily have to be the gym yeah, but what's the little steps you can do yeah. to do exercise and if you can affect um your health positively then that means um your mental health also you 100%. know prospers because my dad says there's three keys to not four keys to having um mental health 
and they fall in this order based on how much you consume them. The first one is sleep. Yeah. 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 You sleep most of eight hours. Yeah. yeah. So if you're not sleeping well, if you're not sleeping long enough, if you're yeah. having problems sleeping, it'll definitely have some sort of effect on your mental health. Mm. The next one is food. So what yeah. do you eat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then now the next one becomes exercise. Yeah. And then finally meditation. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you guys. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. 100%. Sleep is so important. Like people always just like, yeah, man, I'm so lazy. Why do you like your body needs it yeah. for you to be functioning in the so right people way. People don't bend as permanent. <laughs> you know, right? I didn't say right. nothing, you know. But anyways, you guys, um, thank you. And as we come to the end of this podcast, um, I'd like to ask you, um, starting with you, what advice would you give a younger you? Younger me. I think I would tell myself. Stop eating the rings. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah. Um, no, I think I'd tell myself to just honestly, as cliche as it sounds, just to to trust the process. Yeah. And to honestly just stay patient. Like I think when you're calm and collected, you're better you can better execute things. So I think I would just tell myself to just, yeah, like stay on your own path and just and just focus on you. Yeah. Daddy, what about you? What advice would you tell a younger you? I think I'd tell I'd tell him to just stay stay focused, you know. Yeah. Don't be too worried about like your outward appearance, you know, because yeah. like do things for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, everybody, there's always pressures from, you know. Everyone. Everyone. So it's just like, now nah, just focus on yourself. You know, like, everything will fall in place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and what advice would you give an older you? Um, oh, these questions. Um, I think an older me, I would tell myself to maybe, like, control my environment so yeah. that it doesn't control you, if that makes sense. So I think just, like, being around people who are, driven and who have the same morals values ethics that kind of thing because i think it's really important to have like a strong support system in life because you're always going to experience you know ups and downs yeah and fluctuations and you you, i mean as much as you can do it yourself i think you need a strong support system to flourish like yeah i believe in that as well Mm -hmm. what about you daudi um i think i'd tell future me to stick with it as well you know just be and also just be patient. That's yeah. why I tell future me is that yeah. be patient at all at every single step. Because also like I like for a patient for yeah. not so patient <laughs> guy. Yeah. That's crazy advice. You tell, yeah, you tell it's like it's basically just like, okay, cool. You want things to be a specific way. Yeah. And then the thing is things might not work out. But it's also if you just allow yourself to be in an like like Lina was saying, be in an environment that really make helps you flourish mm-hmm. and be around people that are really there to push you. The thing is, um a lot of the time it's like your environment also that, I don't know that thing about being a product of your environment, right? Yeah. My thing is, if you, you can also build the environment that you want that best suits you, mm-hmm. right? So if you surround yourself with particular, you know, like-minded people that yeah. you know push you, are also driven, also ambitious, there's nothing you yeah. really can't do. Mm-hmm. So I tell him just. And I think, sorry, can I just add yeah. to my? <laughs> Come on. I Go think on. also just like don't settle because like I think like everybody peaks at different times in their life so i don't want to look back when i'm like 50 and feel like it's too late to do anything you know yeah. like not look back sorry look forward yeah. i don't want to look forward later on and be like um yeah it's too late like it's not too late i think people do things at different times in their life like i told you that woman who, who i see all the oh, time 60, like she's yeah. working on herself even at 60 so just never feel like it's too late to start anything right um We've talked about fitness. We've talked about everything. I don't know if you guys have any like last words for the camera for the guys listening at home. You might have had something that inspired you today that you want to share. I don't know, but no pressure. Mm, that is <laughs> <laughs> like yes, Lena. Um, let's see. I think I just tell people to be open to new things. Yeah. Be open to new things, new ideas, and be open to making new relationships with people. You know. Mm. Um, cause you never know where that relationship will take you. You might be the best of friends two years down the line, mm-hmm. you know, just because you opened yourself up to, you know, interacting with a new person who will then introduce you to something that you really love. Yeah. So, you know, somebody who now introduces you to the gym, you know, See, or. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no cap, that's some good advice, you know, because yeah. weirdly, yeah. Um, uh, like a few days ago. Someone that I had a thing is like last year <laughs> yeah. towards the start, like she texted me um like a few days ago and told me, 
it's crazy how I learned more about you through your podcast than even through you. Oh, but wow. this is because I'm not an old like yeah. Yeah. to my friends I am yeah. but like when it reaches that kind of thing sometimes thing, yeah. you know yeah. I, you're like I don't know this level you know yeah, this yeah, like no, yeah. But yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you? Mm, I think honestly you guys have covered most of it. Um I just want to see you you in the gym next year. <laughs> Yeah, inshallah bet and you know i think it's like you said just stepping out of your comfort zone like i think even today i'm not somebody who's very like i i hate the camera your zoom on her face by this so, <laughs> <laughs> i really hate the camera but i think me being here today is just me trying something new stepping out of my comfort zone and thank you for giving me that opportunity so yeah like dari said just trying new things be open to new relationships i think that was some really good advice Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Lovely, thank thank you. you so much for coming. I really appreciate you guys being here and you know sharing your story and everything. Um and for those listening at home, thank you so much for tuning in. Um remember just to kick it is a blessing. See you next week. Goodbye.